I love the top. I and love, I love the whole this. dress. The tattoo is exposed. Too poofy. I specifically said no mermaid dress and then Change. my jeans were tight. Change. See through. Change. Believe me, I've heard it all. You could stay in the house. But I don't think you do. Not really. Number six, with friends like these, Jamie Sariselli is on a tight schedule with her wedding day just six months away. She's on a deadline and it's time to make the choice her entire wedding hinges on a wedding gown. She's in the mood for something traditional and vintage with a low back. Best buddy Kelly has a few more pointers which start and end with no bling. Okay, with a little bit of sweetheart. And a low back. And how about price point? 5,000? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Down on the couch now. Just for a moment. Thank I'll you be so back. Much. You're welcome. So excited you guys. Jamie? Yes. Oh no. Here's Kelly. We found a dress that we think it's it's a ball gown. You weren't even supposed to get a preview. No, I don't even are. like you that go. you go. got to go. see her. With those instructions ringing in her ears, Lisa gets down to the complicated business of finding Jamie's dress. But it seems like Kelly is not done, and besides checking up on Lisa's pics, Kelly is bringing in a few dresses of her own choice for Jamie to try on. Dress number one is a tightly fitted bodice made up of delicate lace before it flares out into a full skirt. It's more of a possibility than a probability, all because of the bottom half of the dress which has failed to float anyone's boat. As Lisa and Jamie withdraw to the changing room for the second dress, Kelly brings in another one from off the racks. Now the stylists know the price tag each dress comes with and a Mark Zanino gown is most definitely going to be over budget for this bride. As per rules, stylists avoid bringing in beyond budget gowns to brides because it has the definite risk of the bride falling in love with a gown which is beyond her reach. This gown has all the markers of putting Jamie in a difficult position and Lisa is not happy with Kelly's scarf. As it turns out, Lisa's fears come true and why wouldn't it? The dress Jamie has put on is a one-of-a-kind classy piece. With breathtaking lace and needlework detailing covering the arms and the cleavage, the silk falls in a graceful skirt to the floor, ending in a train at the back. Chin, um, neckline probably come down just a little bit more. Remember, this won't be up I here. I know, but I'm still in love with that last one. I'm having a hard time getting that one out of my head. Okay. Yeah, I know. Bummer. I know. I mean, it's all of these Oh, this is going to be down can't. here, just because the dress is too big. Can't you do an ivory? Jamie is completely taken with it, and it's made a permanent place for itself in her heart, which is not a good thing since the dress is almost twice her budget. At a spectacular $8,400, the dress is beyond Jamie's reach. It's going to be tough for any other dress to beat this one, but with a price tag this comes with, the dress is only good for one thing for Jamie, heartbreak. Even though well-meant, thoughtless actions have unintended circumstances, and this time Jamie is feeling the need for them. Of course, sales let Kelly know the error of her ways, but is it well-received? Certainly not. Kelly expected everyone to bow down to her eagle eye and her expertise, but what she's done has created ripples in an otherwise serene pond. She has been asked politely to let Lisa do her job, which has not been well received by Kelly, who starts taking pot shots at the boutique in general and Lisa in particular. The bonhomey and good mood of the appointment has become a thing of the past, bringing Jamie to tears. You have to get the dress out of your head. I don't know what to say. I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> How's it? Okay, you're frustrated, right? Here's the thing there are other dresses. I want you to try. Right. I love the illusion, um, neckline probably come down just a little bit more. Yes, the Underneath. underlay of this dress is nude, Yeah, but it can be done ivory like the ivory lace. The other way. Better? That's amazing. That totally changes the look of it. It looks like a wedding dress now. I'm in love with that last one. I'm having a hard time getting that one out of my head. So then, there you go. I have to love it, but it's not happening. Then you know what? You might have to keep looking. Yeah, I know. Bummer. Trying to rise above the circumstances, Lisa is immediately put Jamie in another similar dress. Once again, a beautiful lace creation with a similar cut to the dress. She has fallen in love with this one, which is balanced with silver stones. Everyone has fallen in love with it, but of course, the $5,500 price tag has elicited another response from an antagonized Kelly. It's obvious the mood of the appointment is ruined with Kelly taking each opportunity to create ripples and Jamie being stuck on that one dress she couldn't have. 
Perhaps rightly so, Jamie has decided to go home and come back another day with a new mindset. Number 5. Baby Sister Gets Wed Melissa Sorrentino has always dreamt of finding her wedding dress at Kleinfeld and her dreams are finally coming true. Accompanying her are her mother, Linda, Mike, Frank, and Mark, her big brothers who have always been by her side through thick and thin. Altogether, the three well-meaning brothers make up a runaway train and Melissa is trying to catch up. If not, the very capable stylist is here to save her day and in no time, she has her closeted away in a changing room. I'm gonna try on a Panina Tournay dress. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Melissa and I are best friends. We're super close. Their opinions matter so much to me. He, he walks behind me. flower petals. I'm their only sister. Oh. Everyone is going to chime in on their opinions. That's not good. Me and Melissa are probably have the closest relationship. Make sure that she looks the best on her wedding day. This to me is, this is a must. She I has like that. Some pearls and anything that's really embellished. What do you think? What she should wear? Whatever, you know, makes her feel comfortable. Change. My jeans were tight. Change. See through. Change. Believe me, I've heard it all. You can stay in the house. Like when you know, you know. Right. Like when I met my fiance, I knew. Well, how did you meet? We met through him. She has her quickly changed into her first choice and it seems Melissa has already fallen in love. With a hopeful spring in her step, Melissa has emerged from the dressing room to get her brother's take on the beauty she's wearing. But in no time, this boisterous Italian family has started arguing on the finer points of calling it a sauce or gravy. Well, sauce or gravy, dress number one has not found traction with this boisterous family, so it's back to the changing room. Dress number two is quite close to the first dress with only one difference, the asymmetrical skirt falling from an embellishment point into structured pleats. But before the group can give its refreshing take on the new dress, the conversation once again derails. It's clear that the brothers have taken over this appointment and the bride has been relegated to the background. Judging from her body language, that is nothing new. One thing is very clear that the dress is a definite miss for the entire family with only Melissa rooting for it. Dress number 3 on the other hand has made a profound impact on everyone. It's a classy, full skirted gown with artistic white on white needlework flowing on the front of the bodice to the hips before the skirt flares out. Accompanied with a veil, it presents the complete package and gives a regal and classy look to a princess. Country Affair 20-year-old Ronnie Love has traveled from Atlanta, Georgia to find her dream dress. A country girl to her very soul, no power on earth is going to separate her from her boots and they're firmly going on under her dress come hell or high water. Not if Mama Candace poor has anything to do with it. This appointment is setting out to be a battle of the titans, what with Ronnie determined to get a dress her dreams are made of, while her mama has intentions of putting her into something of her own liking. My best friend and my sister-in-law, Candace. What is it you think you're looking for? Um, fighting over the boots when we're probably gonna fight over everything else. Melissa is going to have her hands full with these two butting heads from the get-go, but it's the nature of her job. And it's gonna be a tough one. While Mama Bear is busy picking out her own choices for her daughter, Melanie's got Ronnie shimmying into a dress she had picked out for herself. A beautiful ruffled piece doing justice to her petite figure, it's failed to provide her with the false bravado she needs to march out to her companions. Battleax Mama has got her baby scared and hiding out in the changing room. Dress number two seems to be doing the job much better, giving Ronnie the courage to walk out and show off the beauty she's proudly wearing. And the reaction she gets would deflate any girl's balloon in a second. I love the neckline. I know this is gonna be my dress. Do you love it? Too poofy. I specifically said no mermaid dress and then came out with a mermaid dress on. She did that to spot me. The offhand insult the dress has received has sent the young bride scurrying back to the changing room. Will dress number 3 fare any better? It's an art piece of old work class, but all it's received from Ronnie's companions is scorn. All they're concerned about is getting her into a short frock dress and finally, that's what she's gonna give them. Striding out in the short dress, Ronnie has definitely made an entrance, providing a jaw-dropping show to her spectators until their eyes fall to those boots. The entire wedding party is so taken with a the dress, they're willing to forgive and forget the eyesore carrying it in, a pair of dusty old cowboy boots. Has everyone gone blind or have they all chucked their common sense out of the window? 
not on Lori's watch, no self-respecting bride is gonna walk out of her salon with a pair of old boots showing and she's the one who's finally putting her foot down. The bride is getting a long gun and she's gonna like it. 26-year-old Ashley Lamothy has arrived at Alteration to see if her fate is holding up. She's accompanied by her family and in particular by her daddy cum mom who has brought up his daughter single-handed since they lost their mother at a young age. It's an emotional moment for them all as a dress seems to bring them all together in a moment of remembrance for the one missing from amongst them. Meanwhile, Ronnie is still a dress to choose and this time, Lori is gonna make sure she finds a dress she loves which also covers the boots. And what a beauty she has finally landed! It's a laced up, linged out fancy princess dress complete with a full skirt which ticks all of Ronnie's boxes. But how is it gonna be received by her family fixated on a short dress? It's a miracle that dress has found fans in the entire family and it seems their search has finally come to a happy end. I, I love it. Yeah. That is just... Everybody's gonna think that it's beautiful and especially Zach because I want Zach to love it. Number 3. Too Sweet for Words This is not Francesca Price's first rodeo at Kleinfeld. The first time she came here, she brought the same entourage with her and was unable to put her finger on a wedding gown for herself. Not one to learn her lessons easily, Francesca is all set for disappointment by bringing in her best friend who will not let a gown touch her body unless it does justice to its beauty. Next, I bought my identical twin sister, Angie. I also bought my best friends, Margo, Christopher. They will shoot down a dress that is not right for me faster than a speeding bullet. Ball gown. Do you like a little bling? Uh, not really, not okay. particularly. Oh, really? No. Excellent taste. I'm just going to say it, people. Okay, so tell us where you want to be price-wise. I want to be... Batting for the other side on Francesca's team is Catherine, who has brought Randy along for some much-needed side support. And boy, is she gonna need it. Pretty soon, both Catherine and Randy find themselves batting for Francesca against her entourage, which is hell-bent on bringing her down no matter what. Leading the charge is Francesca's best buddy, Christopher, who has an interesting take on his assessment of the dress Francesca is wearing. You see, this is not Francesca's first rodeo in more ways than one. This is her second wedding, and to Christopher, that means her chance to wear a princess wedding gown has already been used up and she's too old to carry the look. Under that vociferous charge, Francesca is withdrawn to the changing room. Francesca, how do you feel? I feel beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. I love, of course, the bodice. It's so. Do you like the pleating in the skirt here? I do. She looks huge in it. Not because I just think she looks awful in it. Hold that side for us. There you go. I mean, if you don't want the pleating in the skirt, we can find a way to make that happen. Yeah. And could point me where last time I was ready to just <laughs> say whatever you want. They're not walking down the aisle in this dress. I just want to get something that I don't have to imagine what it'll look like. Dress number two is another beauty by Mark Zunino, but once again, Christopher has a few choice remarks to make about this skirt on the dress. Next up is a beautiful silver gray silk dress made with highly structured asymmetrical ruching moving through the bodice before flaring out into a full skirt. It's an art piece worthy of beautiful queen but it hasn't found traction because it doesn't go with the venue. At this point, Francesca is drowning in disappointment as her belief that she might just find a dress that would tick all her boxes slipping away from her. It's only a matter of time before the tears start and soon Francesca is wallowing in grief from her inability to make everyone happy and find a dress that makes her happy at the same time. A counseling session by her sister does wonders for her self-confidence and once again she's trying on dresses with the hopes of finding the one meant for her. And it seems that her efforts are finally bearing fruit as she has finally stumbled upon a raw silk princess dress complete with a sweetheart neckline and a full skirt down below. The dress is a perfect hit with Francesca, but will it come up to her team's high standards? Of course not. That's not how they roll, but this time Francesca is holding on tight to her newfound confidence and has decided that she's gonna be taking this dress home. Number 2. Drama Llama Stacy Sweeney from Knoxville, Tennessee might be an American, born and bred, but she's damn proud of her Irish roots, complete with a shamrock tattoo on her shoulder which she got at 18 years of age and now she's paying for it. 
Her mother-in-law-to-be's raised eyebrows and meaningful gaze are telling her that tattoo gotta stay undercover, come hell or high water, and any jazz she gets gotta go without flow. But Stacy has some bigger plans brewing, all with a backless gown and a show-all cleavage. Mom-in-law-to-be Nora Messing is proud of her Jewish heritage and wants her daughter-in-law to abide by it too. What are you looking for? Glitzy and... Glamorous. Yeah. Like low cut in the back. Tattoo. Just it's a small tattoo on my shoulder. And it's a part of me. I would like for it to be covered. In the Jewish religion, we don't have tattoos. This is a sticky situation, and it just might turn ugly if Stacy's mama bear, Carla Sweeney's reaction is anything to go by, with Stacy Smack bang in the middle of a brewing storm. Flo's gonna have her hands full with this appointment if she wants to deliver Nirvana to the bride to be under her care. The stage is set for the cultural clash of the century if the two family matrons don't pull it together and if they don't get it right from the start, they can send this marriage skidding into a rocky start. This storm in a teacup is swirling into a tornado with Nora picking the side of a tattoo no-show and Carla that of the proud displayers. Caught in the middle is Stacy's freedom of choice and why you've got our battle lines firmly drawn in the sand and opposite corners already chosen at the boxing ring. The first dress going to the bride is a spectacular satin silk gown starting with an off-shoulder sweetheart neckline with a fitted bodice gathered in ruching before falling to the floor into a gentle flare. The stark white is offset with periodically placed delicate needlework and it's already brought Carla to her knees with her very first side of her daughter in it. Stacy's feelings. I really don't want to start my marriage off on the wrong foot with my mother-in-law. You want to talk pickle? This situation right here is a I love the top. I and love, I love the whole this. dress. The tattoo is exposed. Cool to me. It does not look like a pickle. I felt like that. I'm starting to question, you know, if it's worth all of this, that maybe I should just cover the tattoo. So what's mom-in-law to be Nora got to say about it? Well, she has only one spot on observation to make, that it's backless. While this drama is playing out, 25-year-old Christy Hill from Bakesburg, South Carolina has arrived at alterations to pass final judgment on her wedding gown. It's a nail-biting moment and she will find out if her gown will live up to her country wedding dreams the way it promised when she had come with her family to choose it. It's the moment of truth for the young bride-to-be and it's got butterflies doing an air show in her stomach. But the moment she stepped in front of the mirror, those dots have gotten the boot, leaving her happily satisfied with her choice. The next dress is an embodiment of all Stacy's hopes and dreams as if sent her way by her guardian angels. A lacy affair, which is set at high on Stacy's priority list, it has an asymmetrical shoulder line hanging from one sleeve covering up her tattoo which makes it a hit with Nora. Cinching Stacy's trim waist in with a sash, its skirt falls gracefully to the floor in an elegant swirl. It's got everyone's heart go pitter-patter and stands as a positive omen that this marriage is going to bring the two families together and blend them into one. Ridiculous that this one strap just happened to be on the side that my tattoo is on. It was kind of like divine intervention. You're not based on my tattoo. I would never buy a dress for that reason. A scale of 1 to 10, what do you give it right now? I think it's a 10. And forget what they're fighting about. It's time to jack her up. I love it. <laughs> Look how you blended your whole family in in this dress. This strap. And then the veil's for all of us, because we all love it, right? Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's a great feeling. It's a bliss to the dress. Yeah! Number one, the biggest loser. Victoria Vaysbird has a lot to celebrate, which is not just her wedding. She has lost an amazing 115 pounds of weight and instead of rejoicing, she's a ball of nerves not looking forward to finding her wedding dress. All because of one person, her mother Anna. I've lost a lot of weight. I brought my mother's best friend, two of my bridesmaids, my maid of honor, who's my sister. She would want me in. What kind of a gown are you looking for? Traditional and a little bit modern. My mother's more. But what kind of dress do you want? Something that's traditional and sexy at the same time. What about you, mom? What do you think? Well, I want, I want something very tight to show off her figure. She's going to want me in something that would flatter her, not me. 
It looks like Victoria has always struggled to please her fashion-forward mom and hunting for a wedding gown is gonna be no different. She and her mom seem to clash over their sense of style and it seems this is gonna be no different. While Anna wants to see Victoria in something unconventional and high-end fashion, Victoria wants something more classy and traditional. Her only concern seems to be making her mother happy, but her stylist is determined to make the bride happy. With no time to lose, Antonella has friendly separated the bride-to-be from her family and is putting her into her very first option. And that option happens to be a mermaid-cut gown, starting with a sweetheart neckline with a ruching before ending at mid-high level into a ruffled skirt. Victoria might be satisfied with what Antonella has picked out for her, but the only response it has gotten from her mother is a cold shoulder and a request from another showing. How do you feel in this dress? I feel pretty. I saw my body looking absolutely something else. It made me look very, very thin, which I loved, but my mother wasn't thrilled. I'm a little bit more traditional. She just has different visions than I do. She's very modern. If Victoria doesn't speak up, she's not going to get the dress that she loves. It's clear that mom is not impressed with the first pick, and with Victoria looking up to her mom, Antonella knows that the only way this bride is going to choose a dress for herself is if she gets her mom as approval. Dress number two is a far cry from the first dress. It's a structured piece starting with a sweetheart neckline before flaring out slightly into a skirt at the knees. But the hopes Victoria had pinned on this dress are dashed once again with one firm shake of mom's blonde head. Dress number three is completely different from its other two counterparts, but what she gets from Anna is another request for another showing. Dress number four is once again a silk mermaid cut, but once again it's got an ambiguous response from Anna. It's clear to Victoria that if she wants to go home with the dress today, she'll have to go with what she likes, foregoing her difficult mother's input. So once again, she has put herself in dress number one, but this time, she's sticking to it since she's the one who likes it. Problem solved, right? Wrong, Victoria's choice of dress clearly hinges on what mom thinks and getting a dress without her approval is not the dynamic this mother-daughter relationship works. Both have reached an impasse and this time, Victoria is letting mom take over the wheel. This bride is going home without a dress, never to return. Number 4. Spoiled Princess 22-year-old Amanda Aguirre wants to be Cinderella on steroids. Always the princess, she wants to continue with a heritage into her wedding and a big poofy gown is right in line with that vision. And how much money is the queen of the household willing to spend on her princess? Well, the ceiling on the budget seems to be $4,000, but does this princess have any plans to stick to it? Slight side eye with a crooked smile on her face doesn't bode well for the checkbook. She's been everywhere, and she hasn't been able to find the right dress. Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, yes. then let's go. This is within her budget, but for a reason. What do you think? Dress number one starts with a silk bodice closely resembling Amanda's trim figure, done over with sparkly embellishments and intricate needlework. It ends mid-hip before flaring out into a structured billowy skirt gathered in strategic places. It's making Amanda look like a real-life princess, if only that bit of lace border did not exist. It's an old people detail which has garnered it a definite thumbs down. Dress number two is a retake of its first counterpart. Starting with a short bodice which ends at her waist, it's a masterpiece of delicate needle art spruced up with just the right amount of embellishment. The bodice is attached to a gathered skirt starting at the hip, the piece, the resistance being the long veil following behind in a long train. What do you think? It's poofy like you want. I like the dress. But I don't think you do. Not really. I like it. I think it's gorgeous. I think it just looks. I really. I just don't like the lace. Okay. Okay. And then that's not the dress. Yeah. Do not talk yourself into your no. wedding gown. Mm -mm. It has swept everyone off their feet. So what's Amanda waiting for? Well, she has her heart and eyes set on a dress displayed on a mannequin. But there is only one problem. It's over budget. Is that gonna stop Amanda though? No, certainly not the worry in her mother's face, apparent to everyone's eyes. So this spoiled little brat is getting her own way by stepping into the dress twice her mother's budget. She's a vision in that picture-perfect gown, but she has something else to complain about. There is no bling on the front of the skirt, and the only gown with that bling in the same style is gonna cost $2,000 more. The dress is completely off-budget, but Amanda's mom is most definitely a pushover and Amanda's got her twisted around her little finger. 
but a $9,000 gown is beyond mom's capacity and it looks like this bride is getting a lesson in frugality. As a disappointed Amanda is leaving, Lauren Carter is arriving at alterations, hoping her dream dress will live up to her expectations. It seems she's not getting disappointed this time, and within three weeks, she's tying the knot with the love of her life. That's all we have for you folks. Join us next time.